Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Don, where are you awake? <laughs> I, I was just going to make a comment apropos to you and a couple other people that I know. It's very late for you guys. It is, pardon me, Breakfast with the Master. It is the 4th of November. It's a Monday. How are you guys? Am I talking to myself? Oh, okay. You're just in a stupor. We are uh, very thin this morning. I don't know if people are relaxed after no charting for the last four days. Good, Maceo. Take your time. Um, we're very thin today. We have 11 out of 25. I don't know if that's people uh, can't figure out the link, which came to them in email. All of you guys figured it out. Or uh, people are relying now on the uh, ability to watch replays. Um, and that's fine. Um, as I said, we're going to keep two up. Then when it's time to put the third one up, the last one will roll off. Daylight savings. Maybe they're confused, Wes. I know Shane is. Hell, when Shane asked me if I was not the same as Lot, well, I'm going to talk about that in a second, Nixon. When Shane asked me about changing, I had I was like, uh, I can't do this math. <laughs> I know I know I have a doctorate in math, but I really can't do this math until I sit down and figure it out because am I going to run into Dr. Gary? And am I gonna, I mean, like, is the midday session going to run into the breakfast session? I don't know. So anyway, I get that. Um, let me warn everybody that has decided, oh, you know what? It's not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. But let me warn all of you that have decided the sessions are recorded and therefore I don't have to watch live. It's not the same. I do understand watching it at midnight or one o'clock or two o'clock um, is difficult and is not the same as watching it at six o'clock in the evening or six o'clock in the morning. You're not you're not a hundred percent. I don't even know if you're fifty percent. And by the end, you're sure as heck not fifty percent. So, I get it. But you're going to have to work extra hard if you're not watching it live. Okay? I'm not telling you you can't do it. I'm just telling you you're going to miss some of the nuances. Recordings are not the same. That is why at Stanford and MIT, I do not allow recordings or notes. Actually, I need you to stay in the moment. So, I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying extra work. That's all. You're going to have to want it. Well, I, I, I get it that it helps that there's recordings. I understand the diction. I get it. I understand it. I also like that, you know, the other thing that I like about it is that you guys can now pay attention and then go back and say, okay, what the heck was he doing? Instead of furiously writing notes and missing half of what I'm saying. I get that. I understand that. Everything has a trade-off, right, Ikshan? That's just the way of life. So all I'm saying, though, is if you decide, well, we'll see if it'll be a big help, Susan. I hope it will be. I just don't want it to be a crutch, okay? Um, if you decide, you know what, I don't have to stay up and watch it, I get that. But we'll see if you can capture it and get the same meaning out of it. Maybe you get more hell. I don't know. Yeah, the interaction is very important and also... There's something about live. Remember, it used to be a commercial. Is it live or is it Memorex? There's something about live that makes it not the same. Anyway, um, I promised everybody. Well, no, I, I didn't promise. I have to do. I have to make an announcement because I have to do disclosures. Um, as you all know, the fund is done for the year. We did crackling 525% for the year. Marked to the market as of the end of October. At the end of October, I had a discussion with each one of the partners. And uh, I don't know if you guys are watching the news or how much you watch the news. I don't watch it hardly at all, except that, as you all know, my wife tells me, did you see this in the news? You need to see this in the news this morning, dear. She gives me one or two or three things. Like This morning she gave me 
Yeah, this morning she gave me, hey, cool, look at the new Jaguar, Dad. Because <laughs> I love Jaguars. And it is a rocking Jaguar, but I'm not going to go buy one. But Not until the kids leave. But anyway, <clears throat> um, that was the big news item. Um, but one morning, about, I don't know, four weeks ago, she mentioned to me that there was an ominous uh, speech given by a senior official of the Saudis. Now, I'm old enough, and I was driving at the time of the oil embargo against the United States. And when I was young, when you wanted to drive, you had to take five five-gallon gas cans, put it in the trunk. When you were done you know, going on a date or whatever the hell you were doing, you had to put five gallons. That's all you could buy in the United States was five gallons at a time. You had to put five gallons in the back in the car, and you had to fill up each of the five-gallon gas tanks, gas cans. We had about 20 of them lying around because my dad was a welder, so he always needed gas, so he always had all these ga old, the old gas cans. And um, I remember when it hit. I remember what it did to the economy. And the funny thing is, Prior, prior, during and after that event, the Saudis were our buddies. And, quote unquote, they were. You guys can hear me, right? Somebody, if you can hear me, thank you, Susan. Somebody just let, let Dawn know. Thank you. Just tell Dawn uh, good night. <laughs> uh, she's having trouble. She's just going to sleep. Anyway, um, I can remember. The Saudis were friends throughout the, the entire situation, and they quote-unquote mitigated how angry the rest of OPEC was. And yet, basically, they stopped delivery of oil and gasoline to us, right? Well, there was a comment, uh, I can't remember how many weeks ago, I'm going to say four at this point, and I know the Saudi re Saudi real take a breath. I know the Saudi royalty intimately and personally all the way down the line. Spent a lot of time there. Went to school with a bunch of them. University of Chicago is a lot of Saudis, at least when I went there. Chose the University of Chicago for undergraduate as well as for uh, business and economic school. And I had several friends there. One of which is the was the first investor of Blackthorn in 1985. There was a speech made about four weeks ago. The king, the current king, is in his late 80s and likely to pass away soon. His elder brother is helping him. His elder brother hates the West. Specifically, he hates the United States. Now, the way the lineage is set up, None of his children are in line to succeed. What's the word? They're not part of the succession. My good friend is the, well, at one point he was the fourth, and his brother was the fifth in succession. Um, the second passed away of old age not that long ago. The third died mysteriously. And you know, you know what's funny? It never hits the news. Then we get this senior Saudi military, se senior Saudi advisor saying that the U.S. and its allies don't live up to their promises, and they're not only disappointed but they're going to have to reconsider their relationship with the United States. Now, this right after they made a huge purchase of military equipment. As soon as it was delivered, they made that comment. And they've begun um, a new relationship with China. I'm not anti-Chinese, but a new relationship with China. And um, <clears throat> China is paying them in... They're bartering, bartering for oil. 
So <clears throat> I filed that away. Talked to my friends about it. They're disturbed. They live in London. And quote unquote, they have said that they're not interested in becoming king. And they have dual citizenship. They basically are British. And their job now is that they own offshore banks. Now, I have to get the time right. It's either a week or 10 days ago. The United States, there's never been a Middle East power that was part of the uh, Security Council of the United Nations. The United States fought long and hard to get the Saudis onto this council. The Saudis were seated on this council a week or 10 days ago. At the first official meeting, they waited until they were introduced by the United States. Then they stood up and they said, uh, the United States, you know, basically, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote, I'm, I'm not going to quote them, I'm going to paraphrase them. The United States are liars. Their allies are liars. They don't live up to their promises. Look at, look at Syria. They told us, point in fact, that they would take Assad out. And the rest of us, you know, Saudi Arabia, Oman, Jordan, are suffering because Syria is dragging us down. So the United States did not live up to its promises. And we refuse to sit on any committee that they're a part of. So, I don't talk about politics much. <clears throat> and I'm not going to talk about my where I stand in terms of my United States politics, where I am in the spectrum. Other than to say, basically, I'm a libertarian and I'm an American. I can see where this is going. Some of you might remember, I, I was the first one to say, on the, we had a session the day that they were talking about the Arab Spring, and I said, this is going to be the Arab winter. And actually, it's turned out to be the Arab nightmare, at least for the West. Now, for the Arabs, I think they're basically going to go back to tribes. This structure was forced on them by the British and its allies, which, of course, America was becoming strong, but wasn't quite as strong as it is now. I think that's all going to break apart, but that's just my opinion. My other opinion, though, is that we will soon see an energy fight. It's not going to impact the U.S. like it used to because a number of months this year the United States has been net exporters of oil. But Blackthorn Capital will no longer manage money for anybody other than allies of the United States. Period. My friends are still my friends. In fact, I love them. But they're traveling back to Saudi Arabia by the end of the year. I think they're traveling back. They're in great peril if they travel back, but that's just my opinion. Because they're now probably two or three in, in line for the throne. But in any case, they've shown that they're Saudis. And I think the Saudis are about to dance a different tune. So, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I'm getting, I'm at the top of my game, but i am also been doing this a long time. I'm unwilling to increase anybody's wealth other than the people that are allied with the United States. So, my investor base will be changing dramatically beginning 2014. End of announcement. Would you all like to learn some stuff today? I got a headbender today. You ever been in one of those trades that you get into? And you keep waiting for the payoff? It's not bad. You just keep waiting for the payoff. 
Uh, there's just enough in it that even even when you think about, you know what, maybe I'll just, this is a logical place to just take my money and never mind. It's it's never exploded. But there's just enough that it keeps you in it. Do you know what I mean, Inksha? Frickin' thing just drags you along. So, as I said, the fund is closed for the year. That means I can actually show you trades that I'm still in. So, <clears throat> let's take a look at this trade. That's not it. Okay. Um, and this all came out of... Damn, whoever you are. I <laughs> can't remember who made the comment. The currencies are untradeable. And, and I've made some nice trades, don't get me wrong. But now I've got it stuck in the back of my mind that I need to look at currencies. And so, uh, I don't trade Swiss very often, but I poking around and the nice thing about Swiss is you know it tends once it tends to move it tends to move and move and move and move and move and move it's a very clean currency when before the euro if you wanted to trade the Deutschmark you generally if you were smart you would take your position in the Swiss because the Deutschmark had all these crosses going against it and the Swiss was basically the proxy for the Deutschmark but it was clean there was no noise there wasn't a, there wasn't a lot of you weren't likely to get washed out, um, and things generally went straight to their target. So let's watch and see what happens. You can see. Let's see if I can tell the tale. So it's 20 minutes Swiss, 24 hours. Time-based bars, which also a lot of you said, can we see some more time-based bars? Correct. So. Uh, you can see price is doing a whole lot of nothing. Well, Don, see if you like this one. Price is doing a whole lot of nothing. That's a whole more than a whole day. So that's uh, 30, 30 pip uh, range for a whole day. Yahoo. And maybe I should have taken that as a sign of things to come, huh? But hope springs eternal. So I'm I'm just basically watching. Okay, it starts to maybe it's extending itself. And you can see come out of the hole nicely. So I know that there's lots of energy contained here, right? That's about as energy packed as you're gonna get. Almost two days of the same price. We try to go lower spring out of the hole. Let's see if this goes anywhere. So I mark an alternating pivot. Nothing more than that. And I say, hey, it's vertical. Now, what'll verti what will vertically like vertical likely get me? Already say something I want to do while youth guys think about it. That's not it. There it is. What will vertically get me? Verticality. I don't understand the question. Okay. When price goes vertical, what generally happens? How about that, do? Maceo says uh, horizontal. Well, yeah, it certainly makes me wonder if this is horizontal. Yep. However, I see this over here, kind of. Although at that point we were marching down. Not much response here. You guys awake? Exhaustion, maybe. Okay, vertical up, vertical down. Yep, there we go. Maybe runs out of energy. So, okay, so we'll see what we get out of this. One, two, three, four bars closing higher, but triple bottoms. Uh, and let me just, heck, why not? One, two, three, four, five bars with higher highs. Six bars with higher highs, double bottoms. K 
can you see the we're kind of coming to a head maybe that's the way to see it we're we haven't taken out the high but we are leaving shells down below and we test the prior high and pull off so I'll mark that although I could just use the same mark okay everybody with me so now I can make the case that the battle lines for the moment are drawn I don't know what's going to bring me but I can make that case okay it tests and holds tests and holds but I note that the closes are lower and the highs are lower zooms both when it zooms both this becomes MLY as in XYZ We come down, leave a low, but close on our high. Can we have an A, B, C? Well, we can. We can have an A and a B. I don't see the C yet, but we'll see. Now we got a shelf again. And the upside at the moment is this low and this low. I'm not a zone guy, so that's not what this is and we're failing to get above that okay now we pop above it first close back above it but we close back inside back above it again okay same closes same highs really still not a not much of anything And I, I'm asking myself, how do I define the midpoint? Meaning, wh where is it in here? What tells me where it is? Um, it'll be clear in a moment. Now we close below it with gusto, so to speak double tops another new low but we close higher triple bottoms so my question is I don't remember when I moved this I think it was probably here let me just move it back I think it was here well that would be that would be wrong I, hang on a second oh you go away come here uh, it was about here there we go now you come back here sorry if I talk to myself isn't it all right so my question is I've not heard that term middle pivot what distinguishes a middle pivot well a B C and actually you say what I want to know is not actually I'm just going to leave that sentence, but let me do, let me describe it better. What tells me what what part of this mess tells me that the B pivot or the middle pivot is in? Is it this low? Is it when we come up and make a high and then take out some lows? What is it? I have a theory about it, but what do you guys think? A break of the high showing buyers. No, I'm trying I'm trying to confirm this. When do I know this is the high high Masail? About fifteen thirty. Yes, but why? 4th bar. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. But why? 
Sharp up and sharp down. Break the triple bottoms. Can you see there's a lot of opinions here? Rejection. See, here's the thing, though, Don. Then couldn't, if I was just going to do that, then couldn't I draw, then shouldn't I be drawing that? But that's too steep for me. Even if I, not maybe not if I modify shift it, but it's not what I'm looking for, I don't think. Okay. Uh, well, I just shift it and there it is. Okay. Anyway, there's a point to all this, all this questioning. And I, I, I don't have an answer for you. This is the art part. Okay. And I, I played around with it with you guys on Thursday and Friday last week. And now this maybe brings it further toward the truth. Defining, when you define the, uh, not defining the B pivot, it's obvious that this is the B pivot, isn't it? At least at this point. Okay. But when you define it, when you define the A pivot, remember I told you you can be slow to, to find the A pivot. You can be slow to define the B pivot. Do you remember me saying that? And this is a great example because is it here? Because then as we come up, we don't actually know, well, is this the high? Do I need to redo my pivots? What? Is it here? Because at this point, this run up has failed. And, you know, now we're, etc. Why can't we just have a sliding C? Well, I think a sliding C. Uh, well, in essence, that's what I'm saying, Don. I kind of, let me finish. Um, the C is what demands that you make a decision on A and B. Okay, you can mark alternating pivots, but they don't have to be set in stone until you, go, okay, this is probably the C, right? At that point, you need to have made a decision. So in some ways, PC is important, or an AB is important, but in some ways, it doesn't become important until you identify C. Now take a look at this BC line. Pretty good, huh? But I, I couldn't tell that until I went, uh, you know, I think that's C. Then I draw it in and I go, hey, that's a pretty nice looking BC line. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. This was another possible BC line, but it's too, it's too steep for me. The shift might work. But this BC line on an, on itself is better than this BC line. But I don't know that until I get to C. So might seem like a small point to you. Are we saying after we confirm C? We are, Sean. After we confirm C, we better know where B is. Does that make sense? And in point of fact, B is almost irrelevant until we have a C. Correct? B's just floating out there in space. Unless you're rolling, and I don't do this. If you roll pivots, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, F, et cetera, et cetera. I can't even see the alphabet anymore. Do you know what I mean? But you see that I skip pivots. I don't, I very seldom roll pivots. I can't remember the last time I did. All right, so. At this point, I'm willing to draw one in. Oh, and don't forget I said vertical, so I'm likely, and it's the currencies, so I like modified shifts if we have any verticality. And this is what it looks like. I like the BC. Um, and by the way, just a note for the rest of the week, they're 
burning again in the forest all around me here. So um, I don't know if they're burning as early this morning, but my eyes are already starting to sting. Um, so don't be surprised if I have, sound like I have a cold all week or have bad breathing because um, the winds are blowing right into my part of the mountain from where they're burning. So anyway, so let's watch this median line. And see, now the interesting thing is this was MLY possibility here. I don't actually think I can confirm C until this happens, which is very unusual for me. True? I try and do it within four or five bars. And this one's farther away. But it is what it is. I found that even if I thought C was to the left, leaving noise below it gives you the ability to have a sliding C and still be in the right trade. Okay. Um, well, we have a distinction to make, Dawn. I'm not even trading. You're looking for a trade. I'm trying to understand the market. Okay. I'm not quick to trade. You want to mark pit. I mean, I'm, I'm just telling your personality. You want to mark pivots and go to the trade. Right? You, you can tell me if I'm wrong. Well, I'm not saying you... Uh, it's not even a too fast thing. It was a... And I used to be there. I'm not there now. I'm looking for a quality trade that makes sense for me. I'm not just looking for a trade. So, different tasks. So now I'm watching. I got this nice median line. That's fine. I'm watching it. And I, But I still have this red line is, is the battle line. It's prior high. This blue line is the bottom, as is this. So I still kind of have horizontal battle lines. And now I've got a median line, which hopefully will give me price. So we're watching. And it's Swiss. And just, hey, Timmy. Did you need that Glock? Are you okay? Whatever happens, just be careful out there. So, oh, well, all right. So we bust resistance, at least for the moment. We're still within the median line. Makes me feel a little bit better about the median line. For 20 minutes. And then we're right back into it. But we're staying up pretty much out of the range. Just kind of sliding around. Now we come up to the upper parallel of our modified shift and turn. So I need to put this in just to make myself feel better. There we go. So this is a forced pivot. Yeah, I'm with you, Timmy. <clears throat> so we'll see what that gives us. So I've got M1, M, well, M little i, I don't know how to say this. M, M little i squared. And now we're running a little bit to the downside. Let's see what we get. We're at the lower parallel. The upper parallel held. Maybe the lower parallel will held. Held. Well, that's good. We'll hold. Dancing around it. Okay. Showing its frequency. First close below it. Second close below it. And note that we're right back in our prior lows. Close in the middle of the range. No follow through. Double bottoms. Two closes higher. Three closes higher. Well, the fourth close higher with one, two, three higher lows. I'm going to mark that MLI cubed for want of a better way to say that. 
So now I can draw a new median line. It doesn't mean the other one isn't working. I'm trying to make sense of it. Everybody see what I'm doing? Anybody lost? Or disagree? Sorry, dropping stuff. Why don't you anchor it on the previous low? What previous low? Okay, George, one second. I, George, I actually even talked about this. I don't like to roll pivots until this fails. I mean, I can, but why? You want to see it? It's the same. I mean, you can. It's fine. Make you feel better. I'll do it. There's no difference in this median line. Except for one thing. When I'm looking at pivots, this is where price took off. But that's the art part, George. When you go back and, and practice this, and you can because it's 20 minutes, everybody has the same 20 minutes, go ahead and take a look at it, see if you like it better. That's the art part. I'm fine with that. How about that? That'd be, the, that'd be the original low of this blue line. This would be the second touch. I'm fine with that. I just didn't. But, you know, maybe it's more appropriate. I heard you say you're trying to understand the market. There are two median lines which denote probable direction and frequency. Other than that, I'm not sure what you're doing. Can I tell you a secret, Maceo? I tell you a secret. I don't. I don't know what I'm doing yet either. See, that's the point. What almost all of you don't understand. I don't jump from drawing a meeting line to trading. I'm waiting for the market to sort itself out for me. Okay. I don't know where this market's going. I'm just reading price. That's right. And you know what? I might read it for a couple days, Maceo, and say, I, you know what? It might be three months before I look at Swiss again because this sucks. But I'm reading price, okay? Somebody made the comment that the currency is untradeable. I'm trying to bear that out. Or not. Does that make any sense? That's the light bulb going on. Now, Maceo, I put you in the penalty box, remember, last week? Okay, why did I put you in the penalty box? Yeah, there you go. I was just a guy looking for a trade. Instead of a guy that's patient, waiting for the market to sort itself out, right? thing about it is, out of all the people here in Maceo, you actually understand the physics of all this better than probably anybody else. Correct? But you're not even tripping over the physics. It's lost on you. I can throw out a really high-end physics concept, and you get it. But it doesn't... You need the patience. You need to let the market sort itself out. Okay? Sometimes that means you need to draw for a while and then say, there's nothing here. Forget it. It's not making sense to me or it's not worth my time. Sometimes you have to wait till the market sorts it out and then trade. Right now, to be honest, Maceo, you asked the question, I'm not sure I understand what you're doing. Maceo, I'm not sure I understand what's going on. I know what I'm doing. I'm trying to let price sort itself out. Okay? But I don't know what's going on. And I think 
most people think that I look at a chart and say, okay, I know where this is going. It's not like that. It might sound funny, but to hear you say that it's okay to draw and not know is instructive and quite helpful. Okay, well, that that's actually part of today's exercise, which is the market goes where it goes, and um, I'll just go along with it without any opinion. I Do you have an opinion? I ask you, vote. Do you think this thing is going up or down? Or nowhere? How about that? Where do you think this thing's going? Don't know, says Wes. Don't know, says Don. Don't know, says Sean. Does anybody know? I decline to put my foot in the snare. That's a new Maceo. I know since I've been watching it, says Matthew. Thank you for reclusing yourself, Matthew. I appreciate it. So... I'm just paging along. Uh, listen, I'm not watching every bar. I don't. I don't have time, and I'd be bored out of my gourd. But I got my eyes on a few currencies because, you know, when people say yeah, I'd like to see more time-based bars, you know, I'm free of the. I'm free of the fund at this point. I can do whatever I want. So I'm, you know, I'm looking at a few currencies. I'm still watching my normal stuff, but I'm now I'm looking at a few currencies as well, but I've kind of turned the currencies off because it was so much easier harvesting money elsewhere. Don says, good, because I don't have tick data. Okay. Okay, we're testing the median line, actually both median lines. But you can see no opportunity to trade here. You might want, you, I guess you could have played the, it recaptured the lower modified shift parallel. Uh, and the stop is, the stop's acceptable. You could, could have done that, I guess. Don't know that I want to play that game, but that would have put your stop underneath the low, low. It's been tested now. Uh, it hasn't shown me enough inclination that it's going to do anything that I wanted to do that, but there would have been nothing wrong with that. Everybody follow me. Get long here on the triple bottoms because we're back above the lower parallel. And put your stop under here. You could do that. There's nothing wrong with that. There's lot. There's probably lots of trades in here. But none of these have flipped the trigger for me. So I'm watching and I'm watching. And I have not seen anything of real interest. Has anybody seen anything that really made them sit up and go... Now that wants to, now I really want to trade now, man. I'm just, I'm just kind of so-so about the whole thing. We'd like to see some, John, let me put it, let me, let me rephrase what you said. Like to see some manly pivots for him. Some real, real pivots, right? Not this. I mean, not not working hard to decide if they are pivots. Also, where's the violence? There's nobody getting hurt in this market. You can see the lows stacking up. You can see the highs holding. I mean... I don't want to insult anybody. This is kind of a vegan market, isn't it? Everybody's happy. Nobody gets hurt. Nobody's losing much money. Nobody's making much money. It's just kind of a... just kind of exists. <laughs> I don't think blasted is the word you wanted to use, Maceo, but I get the point. It's just... You know... This is the anti-speculator market. And I'm a speculator. Okay, so I'm watching, and I, I'm waiting for the, I'm waiting for some violence, I'm waiting for some movement, I'm tired of actually having to work hard to decide where the real pivots are. You guys have only been here a few minutes, how are you feeling? Is that how you're feeling as well? You're feeling like, Tim, why are you showing me this? This is the best you could come up with this morning? Oh, <laughs> crap. I've fallen and I can't get up. 
Uh, just when you think it's safe. That happens. Wow is right. Um, is that violent enough for you? That was a leading question. Um, I knew it was coming at some point. I actually didn't know when it was going to come, but boy, it was when it came, it, it came hard and fast, right? It, even I jumped a little bit there. Okay, so I got some violence. But that in and of itself is not going to be enough, but maybe that'll shake the tree, right? I will tell you live, I was just about to go, okay, I'm done with Swift. I remember now why I don't watch Swiss very much. And I'm watching several other currencies that are actually doing some stuff, so we'll send the Vegans running. Yeah. I'm watching other, several other currencies that are actually a little more interesting. And then this happens, and I thought, well, let me see how this plays out. Maybe this will wake it up. So here's our first pullback. Three lower bars flat bottoms. I'll extend it forward. Maybe it's frequency. Okay. There's our low low for the moment. So I connect that. And of course, I mean to move it. Maybe that'll be frequency. I don't know. So I'm just drawing and watching. This makes me interested. Are you eyeing up a median line A yet? Uh, no. Because this chart, and here's why, John. To me, this, uh, if you want, I'll erase it, but you should be able to see it. If I take this bar out, this chart doesn't belong to this chart, does it? That's kind of what I was thinking. With this much violence, all these people are going to wake up in the morning and go, what the heck happened? Hey, BJ. That's right. You're not alone. We're still missing. There's probably four or five people still missing in action. It's okay. We understand it. It's daylight savings time. It's a communist conspiracy. I told you that when my wife decided to move to Arizona, when I found out that, that we didn't change time zones, I didn't even care what Arizona looked like. I was in. No time zone change? Are you kidding me? That's like so amazing. Utopia. Thank you. I was looking for the word, Wes. Yes, that's utopian. <laughs> it was a hey, how you doing, darling? Now, see, unlike the rest of you, I know what Rebecca looks like. I'm I'm thinking that Rebecca's rubbing the sleep out of her eyes, going. Did we change time zones this morning? I hate that. Now she's going to hit me with a baseball bat. Anyway, we got a whole lot of range going on again. We make this nice, big, wide range bar, and I think we're out of the soup, and the soup starts all over again. So here's my, in an odd way, or not an odd way, line of maximum excursion. Here's the downside line of maximum excursion. At the moment, this looks like it's more likely to come into play before this one. Um, and again, Maceo, I'm still just trying to figure out what's going on. I did get no bounce. You're right, Timmy, and you can say it publicly. I did get absolutely no bounce. That is, that is a good point. We went to the bottom, and we're lying here, dead. So that kind of keeps me regaining energy. Yep. 
Maybe. That's enough that it gets me to stick around, Don. New chart. You know, Twitter's going public this week, right? So this is like the IPO of Swiss. It just went public again. So how's it going to play out? Well, my maximum excursion line, both are, both are dead. And we're in a very, very tight range at the dead bottom. Ain't nothing going on. So, John, I don't, I don't even know. How is Swiss going public? Well, Petra, this is a new chart. See, we are in a very tight range. This is a wide range bar. If I just cut this bar out, you can see it, the charts are no longer connected. It's like a, it's like an IPO. Okay. It's a it's the new and exciting Swiss, not the old and boring Swiss. Except that now that we got back down here, it's back to the old and boring Swiss. It's just at a different price. Follow me. And how are you this morning, Petra? Good. So, I mean, we're just in a nothing range. And John asked me, John G asked me, do you think about market a pivot? Um, I don't even know where I'd mark a pivot yet. I'm working hard trying to think of a way to mark a pivot. But at this point, I mean, we were in a 10-point range for a day. Would you consider moving the zoom bar? You mean just erasing it? Yeah, but I I can do that in my head. Can't you? If you want, I'll erase it. That'll make it. All I have to do is this. Watch. Now it's gone. John, how's that better? But it doesn't really help me much, does it? I could bury this on the left, and we'd still only be 15 pips wide. So this is a tough one, um, which is why I'm not trading. Um, for some reason, I didn't just switch to the other currencies. I'm trading something else at the same time, but I just kind of kept paging back. All right, now we broke to the downside. I thought, all right, well, it was slow. Hey, Rebecca, I got your email. Um, it was slow, but maybe it's breaking out to the downside. Maybe it, you know, maybe Swiss is just in rock time, right? Oh, look. Why look? Movement. I forgot what that looked like. And we've got a little bit of rejection here. So I'll throw that out there, and we come down, double bottoms, start to crawl up. So let me mark that. And if you take a look, we basically have doubled the range. Plus or minus a tick. And now we're trading in that lower quadrant. And uh, does the word irritating come to mind? Or is it just me? I feel like I'm getting my teeth drilled at the dentist. But, yeah, but I so want to find a trade, another trade in the currencies. I did, what did I do last week? I did something. I do 240 something. I can't even remember. I've made three currencies. 240 Canada. Thank you, Wes. I've made uh, three trades in the currencies in the last week. So there are trades. But, you, boy, you better adapt. For, for example, like this. There are trades here, but you better be ultra patient in this. 
the Canada one, I just had to change time zones. I guess if I if I traded the 20 minute candles to the 240, it probably would have looked like this, right? Ooh, you know what? I think lots of people didn't get the didn't understand the time change. Cause Kyle, hi Kyle. Briefly breaking below the low here. Let's see if we run. Okay, two closes below the low. Pop back in. Okay, lowest close of the move and lowest low. Let's see if this follows through. Um, second. So I've got a new maximum excursion line. See it? Time doesn't change in Arizona. Don't I feel silly, Kyle? Um, about 15 minutes ago, there were eight other people that weren't here, so don't worry about it. It's okay. And this is recorded so you can catch up. It's all right. All right? We're, we're all with you, Kyle. Don't, don't worry about it. I'm the only one. How about that? So we're getting some upside movement, but we're still back within that nothing range. And now look at this. Okay. Does this make you sit up and look a little bit? It's a thir it's a thirty thirty plus pip bar, thirty five pip bar, thirty seven pip bar. Yahoo. And, of course, pay attention to our ATR. It's down to 9 pips. Now, remember, my rule, I don't care what you're trading, never use a stop less than 15 pips. I don't care what the ATR is. Okay? You're getting sucked into trouble. Uh, let's go here. What's the ATR, ATR here? Yeah, we're still at 9 and 10, 9 and 10. I'm shocked it just stays at 9, but I guess it's because it's so long. But... Okay, just because the ATR is 9, don't use a 9-pip stop or a 10-pip stop. Minimum of 15, and you need to be 5 to 7 past your extreme. Everybody understand that? This is a good day to remember that because, of course, everything is compressed. Okay, so you think maybe this is a wash, closes with great separation? It's a candidate or no? I haven't seen anything that even remotely looks like a wash yet, so I'm going to mark it as it could be. Okay. That looks like a wash to me. How about you? So, John, first time that I'm actually vaguely interested in marking an alternating pivot. It doesn't make me want to go back and mark this one and then up here and then draw, but it makes me want to mark this one, okay? I'm in no hurry, especially with this currency. Show me something. Okay, i got three nice-looking bars. If you can erase these from your mind, three nice-looking bars. So that's good. It's a good sign. Four nice-looking bars. Okay. Oh, don't go back in the soup on me. And we're right back on the soup. Can you believe that? So this was definitely a nice little wash. And even though we poked through it, I'm going to leave this as the line of maximum excursion at the moment to the downside. I suppose. God forbid. I, I'm just guessing. That's not so bad up there either, is it? All right. So I got a little bit of frequency going too. So... Maceo, can you see the things are starting to add up a little bit? It's been boring as hell, but they're kind of slowly adding up. And I, don't, I don't generally like to page through to watch something for a whole week, a 20-minute chart for a whole week for things to add up. But, again, I was taking the can't trade the currencies uh, test. The, the gauntlet had been laid down, so I wanted to 
see see how ugly they are. And I can see why people are bored, no doubt about it. Now we come down. We, do, we leave just a little bit. So, hell, I'll just mark it. Maybe it's a little bit of frequency. Maybe not. This is definitely, at the moment, my downside max maximum excursion. Let's see what this brings us. And this is my upside maximum excursion which is drawn off of here. Let me, let me give myself a little note there to remind myself. Do, 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 do. One thing leads to another, as they say. And if not disciplined, you might start having problems with fighting off boredom trades. That's kind of the lesson here. Don't trade to trade. How'd you like to have sat through this, then got bored, then made a trade, then lost 30 pips, and you're still in the same damn range? What's the point? You know, if you can't, if you find you're having trouble with discipline in markets like this, and boy, I get that, turn it off immediately. You know, move to a different currency or take a break. Put yourself in the penalty box. Do whatever you have to do, but don't do boredom trades. Life's too short. So, at the moment, my upside maximum excursion line is looking pretty good, too. And then we start to crack through that. <clears throat> the lower side hasn't even come into play. The upside just got cracked. Double tops. So, we'll extend that out. But, all in all, as odd as this sounds, I'm feeling a little better because at least some things are making sense. I can find some frequency, copy it over, the frequency works. I see a wash now for the first time. So I'm putting things together. I'm not ready to trade. I'm far from ready to trade, but I'm putting some things together. We're trying to break out to the upside and not able to. I know she haven't marked the pivot, rather just marked it as a pivot of some importance. Um, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Um Maceo, have we okay, this is a low, right? Do I do I have a high of importance yet? To make me think that this low is important? Remember, A and B are not really important until I have C, right? Make sense? That's part of the lesson today. I can mark all the A's and B's I want, but until it's an important C, all I have is an A and a B. So <clears throat> now I mark four bars of frequency. Maybe this frequency is important. And you can see one of these two lines is not going to live much longer, right? Think of it this way, Maceo. I know that this is going to be an important low, don't you think? So it doesn't really matter where I confirm it. I can confirm it on the third bar right here if I want. This is this is an important low. It's the first wash I've seen. It's the first violence I've seen. So confirming this, that's a no-brainer. Okay. We bust through the upsloping, uh, for want of a better term, Minimax excursion. I don't want to make stuff up. It's just a line of frequency that was holding, and now it's been busted. And now on, on the back side, here come the sellers. So let's see what they got in mind. Well, looks like they're coming with something and something more.
And now, when this bar makes takes out this low but does not take out this low and closes high, I note that this is a higher low. See that? It's minor. Okay, if you want me to extend that, sure, I'll do that. <clears throat> it's minor, but it's something. Yeah, so, yeah, so this lower excursion line, they poke through it, but they can't close below it so far. Okay, I'll, I'll give it to you, Jose. Higher lows, and this wash holds. In fact, this kind of looks like a wash too, doesn't it? It's not like this one, but it could be. So could this. I don't know. Could just be boredom setting in all around. And by the way, <clears throat> note the time that this is going on. What time is this? Anybody know? Anybody remember? Geneva Shag. Sure, they're running stops. And and that's all that's going on there. So the, in reality, both of these are washes, okay? Because it is the Geneva Shag. I mean, by definition, that is their life. So especially since they can't hide money anymore. <clears throat> I don't actually think we have any members from Switzerland. Uh, we, we have members from 67 countries and none from Switzerland. How's that? We have, Trin we have somebody from Trinidad and Tobago. Nobody from Switzerland. Weird. <clears throat> and Trinidad and Tobago is not the weirdest. I gotta, I'll have to think about it. That's not the strangest country. I mean, most unusual country. But anyway, uh, we've got a Fiji. I didn't even know they had the internet there. So our four little bars so far, they're showing some frequency. Um, we come down, leave a low. Now we close on our high, so I'll mark that out, and that might be the that might be the end of our frequency. We'll see. And it is. So everything I draw kind of has a quick death, except higher lows and this maximum excursion line. Everybody follow where we are, including nowhere so far. We're seeing some signs now. I'm starting to see things. They're starting to make sense. Possible first alternating pivot. Yep. So part of it is that I'm adapting to la lower volatility, and part of it is I'm actually seeing some things that at least for sh a short period of time are working. Okay? That's what we need. <clears throat> That's what, in, in, a, in a mini sense, I'm myelinating to Swiss, to this Swiss. I'm starting to quote-unquote get it. Well, when I get up here, for those of you that were wondering, when in the heck is he going to say A is in? John, what do you think? I think that means that this low is important. I mean, I think you could have put it at the third bar, too. But, yeah, here it's in. We busted out of everything, so that means this downside is important. Now, I'm going to take a break for a second and show you something. You ready? We talked about this last week, about smaller circles and then about the actual bottoming action. Remember that? And they're not the, they are the same concept, but they don't look the same. With me? Okay. See the bottoming action now?
it still has pokes higher and it still has pokes lower and at some point you're actually going to be horizontal but it's not as easy as oh we're, we're horizontal so it's here no not necessarily we're horizontal it's here not necessarily this low comes in well at some point we start to have tangential curves that are no longer negatively sloped they go flat and then they become slightly positively sloped even though we then get a significantly a significant push lower it doesn't take out this low so I know you, people jumped right into the we're going vertical uh, no we're just turning slowly with me rotation takes time very good Don all right so let me take it off I may come back to it but let me take it off for now let's go back out to the right right amount so to speak that looks about right <clears throat> Two bars closing higher, two lower highs, sorry, two higher lows, two bars closing higher, two higher lows, three higher lows, double bottoms, but higher highs all the way along, higher highs, but the low doesn't play along, more high lows, one, two, three, four, five, six higher highs, seven higher highs, this one closes on its high, I mean, this is a lot of action for this currency and we've gone uh, 70 pips or more we test our prior high and pull off and of course I'm gonna have to do this If this ends up being the pivot it ran out of energy where it was supposed to at prior highs okay Let's see what happens it's almost a center line isn't it without even knowing anything else it's like a line of maximum excursion so far at least well maybe not but the center line idea is still valid. Now, when we got to this bar, we finally poked and closed below this range. So I'm willing to make this MLB. So I've got an A all the way over there, and I got a B all the way over here. With me? Watch carefully. one two three higher lows see it close on its high lots of things are doing what they're supposed to do maybe it's getting close to time to trade and you like the BC okay so there's lots of things in a row now that have made sense Three, so two bars in within my five bar thing I'm willing to call this MLC why because I might trade okay with me and this had remember we had the big wash remember that all the way back there that was the A point so that's vertical So this is what my median line looks like. But I've been chasing this forever. Let's let's quickly pop back and center that. I have one less. And center that and take a look at our bottoming formation. Now what do you think of the bottom? See how it takes time. I, I, I don't want this as a prediction, and that's not what I want you to do. I just want you to understand that it, it certainly looks like we've gone horizontal here, and then this pops. 
And then when we make this low, you begin to wonder, well, how does this fit in? Well, this is how it fits in. Bottoming takes time. You can use smaller round conical sections for these pieces. Oh, you want the property when it's gone away. Okay, I was going to erase it, but okay. You can use the smaller curves for each section. Can you explain your five bar rule after C? Yep, in a second, Don. Um, you can you can use your smaller round conical sections in each of these areas, and you can use them to trade off of if you want. But the actual bottoming of a big formation takes time, even though it's the same process. Okay, it's gears within gears, so to speak, or circles within circles. Or okay. Let me dump this down and then I'll go right to it. Okay, so at what point of the trade would you draw your circle that looks great? Um, I just did, again, look, this is just an analogy, Jose. I actually, when this low, I don't want to do this, but I will. When this low became apparent that this was a higher low. I just popped this on and went, eh, looks about right. But it's not meant to predict the bottom and say the bottom's in or anything like that. This is just an analogy for you guys to understand that the, the bottom takes time to form, okay? It's not a drawing tool to help you find the bottom to the right to solve for the bottom. That's not what it's for. Does everybody understand that? It's, it's, it's just, hey, look, it takes time. I did it last week. I'll probably do it a few more times. But, you know, I'm not going to sell the bottom formation tool for 1995. It's useless. Okay? It won't, it won't, that and five cents won't even get you five cents. You'll probably lose money. All right, so let me go to Dawn's question, which is the five-bar rule. Oh, what am I doing? Five-bar rule. Okay, so if I think there's a chance that I'm going to trade, and I said right here, you know, a lot's happened, and it's happened like I think it's going to happen. I probably want to trade. You with me, Dawn? Okay, so... If I'm drawing a median line, if I have any, if, if it gives me any chance at all, I want to trade within the first five bars. Or, I'm sorry, I want to I want to mark the C pivot within the first five bars. I don't want to be marking the C pivot up here. And I did do that over on one of the other ones, but I knew I had no chance of trading. I was still trying to figure out what was up and what was down. But if this is a median line that I may trade off of, I want to do it within the first five bars because. I won't trade within the first four bars, but I'll trade on that fifth bar in a minute, okay? Sometimes I'm tempted to trade on the fourth bar, but I really, I want to mark it as soon as possible. Think how long I chase this thing. If I chase it and I don't mark it and then it takes off and I could have traded on the sixth bar, I'm going to feel like a ninny. I w and you know some of these some of these median lines, of course, they just take off. They don't give you any chance. But if this one gives me any crawl or any pullback at all, I want to be there ready to trade. Make sense? Okay. No, Don. Does that make sense? After three, after their times, are there times when you trade in the four bars at, within the four bars after C? Uh, I'd be a liar if I said I absolutely know there isn't. I'd have to go back, but um, not in recent memory. There've been ones when I'm tempted, especially like this, where I'm being dragged along. Like there's an opportunity. Let me—I have to tell you the honest to God truth, Don. Let's count these bars and see if I do it in this one. I think I'm showing immense immense patience, but my immense patience is running out. How about that? 
Does that make sense? If this median line don't do it for me, I may just flip over to the uh, Peseta at this point. <laughs> or more likely the soy meal. <clears throat> One, two. At that point, I think it's MLC. Three, four. Nope, haven't traded. I'm safe. It's open season now as far as I'm concerned, Don. And I've marked it within five bars. Did you get my point? And this one looks like it might actually give me an opportunity to trade. It hasn't gone sky high yet. Of course, it might just blow through the bottom and kill me. But them's the, them's the chances you take, right? Median lines carry mathematical probability. Everything has fallen into place. I'm starting to see things, one, two, three, four, or five, that are doing what I think. So I think it might be time to trade. I think. Well, when this bar, now I get it, it may, be touch, it may be misses by a pip or this could be pixelation, but as far as I'm concerned, this bar tests the lower parallel and closes with great separation. Everybody see that? And I don't even care if it misses by a pip or so. I can afford, I can afford, I can afford to trade within this median line. My, I'll put this down. Take a read. Any questions? These are my rules when I trade. The max is not based on ATR. <coughs> the max is based on my equivalent risk. So I don't rate on intraday trades, I never risk more than $300 per contract. Okay, John? Now, a good rule of thumb is I like to double the ATR as a pretty good idea of where the stop is going to fall, plus or minus, you know, four or five pips. And what's it telling me? Between 15 and 25, right? But it's just a touchy-feely thing. These are my written-in-stone things. I don't trade anything with a smaller than 15 pips. My maximum stop is based on ATR, 30 pips, $300 a contract. When I trade S&Ps, the maximum I'll risk is $300 per contract. When I trade chicken bones, the maximum I'll risk is $300 per contract. And I work back from there to, you know, any pesetas, pesos, remimbi, anything I want to trade. Pounds, Canada. Okay, that's the maximum, $300 per contract. So you put it in the local currency and go, okay, it's, I suppose I should say this. John, let me, let me clarify, actually. The minimum stop is 15 pips. Is there a market for chicken bones? Uh, Abdul, I'll make you a price if you want one. Is there one on the exchange? No, but I'll make you a price. Um, this is a better way to say it, John. This would answer your question. How's that? Does that clarify it, John?
No, it's not that it's account sized. That would look like this. And I'm, I'm going to have to fake it. But that would look like this. Right. Now, maybe that is how you set up your average, how you set up your um, equivalent risk, John, is that you, the most you're going to risk is 1.6% of an account. You're going to set it equal to pick something. you got to pick something. So let's say it's bonds, okay? Yeah, Don, we have this. Don, do me a favor. Send me back the link to that. <laughs> I can't find the darn thing. I have, a, I have a currency calculator, which will calculate any risk in any currency pair. All you have to do is plug them in. It's real nice. I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i asked permission to put it on our website. I don't know if they'll let us, but if not, if not, then we'll just put a link to it. That's fine, too. I don't care. Even, even if we put it on our web page, I would, I would give them attribution. Anyway, does this, John, does, does this make any sense? This wasn't, I don't think this was from Wando, but I could be wrong. I just stumbled onto it when I was trying to help Don. Oh, it is Oanda. Okay, there you go. There you go. And I and you know you guys know I have a love affair with Oanda. I just think they did a great thing for people that um, have a smaller amount of money. They're not out there just trying to bang people that are trading a million dollars or five million dollars to crack. They think that the market for people, and they're right, the market for people that that uh, trade smaller amounts is huge. And people should wake up. The, CME had an opportunity to do it, and they didn't. So anyway, John, did this answer your question or not? Okay. Well, another day. Not not something. We don't have time to go into it today and finish the trade. So, um, But I'll make this statement, and we'll come back to it, okay? Let me revise. Let me just one more time. Let me revise this. Because the, the three are actuals, and this was an answer to your question, John. Okay, so, but okay, so that's a that's a statement. We'll come, maybe we'll come back and try and clarify that another time. All right, so I'm willing to trade here. I'm willing to get long at 89.15. My stop is 94, which is five pips below this low. I'm not willing to go all the way below here because, frankly, this thing does not deserve a 30 pip stop. I even think the 25 is a bit rich, but uh, but it's the only thing I have. Not with these tight ranges, yeah, but it's past. You know, it fits all of my criteria. I don't like it in the sense that it's 25 pips, but 15 buys me nothing. So anybody have a problem with this? Other than I waited a week to trade. <laughs> All right. So notice it's Sunday night, by the way. The whole week came and went. Now it's Sunday night, which is in a in a certain sense is a good thing. At least I don't have to worry about the weekend gap, right? So. Sunday is 3 o'clock in the afternoon our time. Can you explain why the price action made you think C? Yeah. Pure and simple. I've got A. I've certainly got B. Okay. We make a low, close on our high. Follow through. Nice follow through. I want to mark it within five west, or I don't have a median line that I can trade off of. So it's not going to get. I believe, believe me, it's not going to get any better. There's five. Well, there's five. One, two, three, four, five. 
that's going to be C, or this, I'm just going to have to throw this out. Follow me? It's a leap of, you know, in a certain sense, it's a leap of faith. But all median lines carry a mathematical probability. Okay? I get your point, but let me ask you this, Wes. Other than the one huge wash, have we had any outstanding bars? Really? No. So you're going to have to use subtlety here or choose, or, or choose not to trade. I, I, I want to trade. Things are, you know, adding up one after the other here. I'm willing to trade. Okay, so you see my orders. I'm not in yet. Everybody with me so far? Yeah. Another question. Hang on. The C is based on the quality of the first bar. Is that what gives you the clue? Well, this does give me the clue, and the follow-through helps. So when I get two more bars that look the same, I'm willing to say, okay, I'm in. Yep. Okay. Double bottoms, I'm filled. One tick off the low. Notice that I went inside the market on both bars for the order. I didn't go at the low. I didn't I didn't risk not trading. The last thing that I want to have to happen is wait this long and then not get filled because I'm cheap. Okay? I might, I might maybe I should have gone two or three, but all I could afford was to go inside by one. So I did that. Because I want my low my stop to be five ticks under this low, which is right here. So I can afford to go one tick in. I went one tick in. And the next bar would not have filled me. And the next bar would not have filled me. And the next bar would not have filled me. So you can see I, I got in by the skin of my teeth or the hair on my chinny chin chin. Sometimes the little things make or break a trade. Now we're about to find out whether or not this trade was getting into, was worth getting into, right? So let's, just for clarity's sake, this is 89, 89.15. Always oh, nice to know, right? If I have that right, let me just double check. I think I do. This is actually it's actually a twenty one pip stop, isn't it? Somebody do the math for me. Even the time changes affected me. That's as much as I'm willing to afford. I'm just not willing to put any more money out there. This one I mean, I could have gone a few more, and but then then I would want to grab this one, then I want to grab the ultimate low, and then I'm over 30. So at some point, I'm not really buying anything. I think if it takes out this low, it, frankly, the idea is wrong. Follow? This is either going to turn up or it's not. And if it's not, I'm going to take I'm going to take my beating and move on to something else. A week is all this was worth. All right, so let's see what we get. And not losing money, right? I mean, I'm making 15 pips. It's a whole day, and I've made 15 pips. Oh, boy. It'll be a long day. I shouldn't say it like that because actually now we're at uh, 22 pips. That is $220. I shouldn't sniff at it. Let's, uh, I thought with this much energy, we'd at least double the range. 
I mean, you know, make it to the upper parallel, right? So let's look. Sixty basically. I'm risking twenty. With with any movement to the right at all, it's three to one. It's skinny, but the way this thing is moving, I think time's probably on my side. Don't you think? And you know, actually, isn't that a Rolling Stone song? A really bad one. I'm serious, isn't it? Are there good ones? I'm not going to go there because I bet there's some Rolling Stone fans, but even Rolling Stone fans are saying uh, Jumpin' Jack Flash is a lot better. Just, I'm just saying. Anyway. <clears throat> we come back and we finally do a good job of testing this. Could this also be a simple lack of interest? Sure, Bob, why not? Mick Jagger's 70 now. Doesn't that make you sick? Bob, this could definitely be a simple lack of interest. In fact, I'm starting to get disinterested. How about you? This was probably meant to be traded on a 240, Bob. But I did a 240. I'm forcing myself to do a 20. You know, I'm the master. I'm, I'm sorry I thought that now. I should be showing you a soy meal trade or a natural gas trade or an oil trade or a but you know, I said I'd do some currency trades on time based bars, I'm doing it. Damn it. Not liking it, but I'm doing it. So I'm long. This is a nice test of this lower parallel. And let's see what we get out of it. I'm still I'm still in the money. Just boring. Still in the money. In fact, okay, now I've got thirty pips in this thing. New high equity. Now I've got 45 pips in this. So I shouldn't laugh. It's 450 bucks, right? So, you know, it's just, yeah, relative to my normal pace, it seems slow. That's all. And it, it's been no fuss, no muss. I can do the midday, I can do uh, the breakfast session or whatever and really just leave my stop and not worry about it. Speaking of stops, okay, our stop is down here. At some point, you're going to want to go to break even. I had a mentoring session with somebody the other day, I cannot remember. In part, I don't mean it that in a bad way. I'm just saying um, what I one thing I do remember out of the session is the importance of emphasizing how I trade and why I trade the way I trade versus the way you guys trade, right? And you should not be thinking about two stops back and all the other things that I think about, you should be thinking about building your account. Okay? As we get up to 89.60 and get through the center line and have taken out this prior high with a little bit of gusto, and we've left a minor low here, what should you all be thinking you're all building accounts. What should you, what should you be thinking? Break-even is great. Wonderful. Look at break-even gives you a lottery ticket, right? This thing goes up. Can't cost you. In fact, in cash for an exchange, it doesn't cost you anything because the spread is your brokerage, right? So it's free. Free, free. Other than the cost of the wear and tear on you, which can be substantial, right? But in terms of actual cash to your account, it's free, which is, you know, underemphasized by other people. So let's keep our eyes on how we should manage this trade. In fact, in an unusual move, even I am going to break even. 
why building an account is different in managing stops and having a large account. It's not having a large account, David. It's the difference between building an account and making a rate of return. Here's the difference, David. Well, all of you listen carefully. When I'm trading a large amount of money, there's only so many moves that I can trade and get into without cocking up the market, okay? If I get in and get stopped out at break even and the move that I believe is going to have happen happens and my stop would never have been in trouble, that is a major failure for me. Because I have a limited number of moves. Do you understand? You guys have all kinds of trades. The, what you don't ever want to do is do damage. You can go in multiple times. It's not even just that, David, because I don't even suggest that for the most part. Pay attention to me when I say that to you, David. I don't suggest, I don't, I don't recommend that in general. But more importantly, there's no, you, you should never, at, when you have this amount of money in your account, you don't ever want this to turn into a, a loss, period. My game is different based on my, not on my account size, based on what I'm trying to do. I'm looking for rate of return. You're looking to grow your account, okay? If I want a bigger account, my investors will give me so much money, I'll gag on it, okay? They can make even me gag. The reason I don't take more money, Jose, is because I know I can make a good rate of return on the amount of money that I have right now. I'm comfortable with it. But if I said, gee, I sure would like to have more money to trade, they'd go, the sky's the limit. How much you want? Would you like $3 trillion like Mr. Frick has? Well, he can't make a rate of return on his $3, million, $3 billion, Sorry, $3 trillion, And neither can I. I. I can't make a return on $3 trillion. At least, at least I haven't tried, and I'm not. I'm not comfortable with it. I'm comfortable with what I have, and it ain't three trillion. When I gin it up with margin, it's about a trillion. How about that? But it's a yeah, it's a big bundle. But I don't often use margin, only in certain occasions. Okay. So anyway, that's not the point. I'm trading for rate of return. You're trading. It hurts your mind you take a loss when you're up 300 to 400 per contract. Yeah. Look, at this point, you've got $450 in your account, and that's how you should be thinking about it. And you should be saying, do I want to take, do I want my account to go from being up 300 or 450 bucks to down $210? No, I don't. You need to think about this capital as harvested. How do I maximize it? Well, Break even is one tool. So even I am now going to go to break even. Because this thing has dragged me to the bone for a week. If it's not moving now, buy. And this needs to actually be extended ahead. All right, with me? I missed any discussion about the target and why when discussing the entry pink to pink. Uh because we built so much energy, I think it's going to go at least pink to pink, okay? Or it's going to drag along with time for quite a bit of time. I struggle with that harvesting money versus giving the trade room to breathe. It's difficult, Don. It's a two-edged sword, no doubt about it. And today we're going to work with it, okay? We only have, I remind me, I have to stop at 8:30. I cannot be late for Dr. Gary's. Um, I keep throwing his schedule off, so you guys got to remind me. But we're gonna we're gonna work on trying to give it enough room to breathe, enough room to breathe, because a lot of people are struggling. Dawn, that was the other part of this exercise. Okay, one was being patient. Two, I wanted to show you bottoms. Three, I want to show you you got to give this you got to protect yourself, but you got to give it room to breathe. Okay, everybody see it? Now let's. Let's go through it and see how this trade unfolds and see if we can manage. That's 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 now the, what's the goal now? The goal now is to manage the damn trade, right? I don't want to lose money. I want to protect what I can without getting shagged out. 
And at some point, I might just say, enough, give me the money. Well, that's up to you. All these things are stylistic now. I do think management is harder than entries. Don, yes. That's why people, other, other hedge fund managers come and pay me a large amounts of money to spend several hours with me taking a look at their trades. They don't want me to look at their entries. They want to look at their money management and see if there's any way to improve what they're doing because they got stopped out or because, you know, they're not able to uh, lengthen their profit targets, those type of things. I will take out profits at the upper parallel. Okay, Jose. Okay, it's fine. I'm going to try, because I know Dawn and some other people are having trouble with this, I'm going to try and just manage it with the swings. Okay, Jose? I will take you out at the upper parallel if it gets there. And no matter what happens, if it gets there, you're out. I don't care if it goes 50 times faster, you're out. Does anybody else have any predictions where they want to get out? I'll put them out. I'll let them out if it gets there. But, but you can't change it. Everybody else says, uh, I think I'll just watch and see what happens. Want to manage with the swings. Okay. So, at the moment, we've got a high going, and we've got a low. Here's our low. We're at the median line. It's kind of so-so. Look at all the flat bottoms. I'm with Bob. Lack of interest. Swiss can be a very sleepy currency, too. Okay, we recover nicely after the flat bottoms and the sell-off. We don't even test the lower parallel. Consolidating again. Okay. Let's do this. Come on, baby. Here's the prior high. And we bust it. And so that makes this our new maximum excursion. Any opinions about management? I'd suggest since it pierced the median line strongly bars back, that shows intent for more upward. Okay. Anybody want to do anything in terms of management? Break even is right here. Jose say, says he wants to put his stop up. All right, so let's. Let's make that light green. So, 23, 18, if that's the minimum. Break evens right here, by the way. The most you can do. The most you can do would be five pips above break even. So you're increasing it, but you're increasing it by five pips. Okay? And none of these work for me as minor swings. How about you guys? No comment? Okay. All right. And you'd be so close to the action. Matthew, you can stay at break even. That's fine. Anybody that wants to stay at break even, stay at break even. That's fine. whole lot of nothing okay it's a grind I note that on a median line relative basis let's go farther this is subtle I'm actually going to do that. We got to poke through. I don't know what it means. It might mean nothing. Okay? Depends on the next few bars. You with me? I may be grasping for straws here. 
I'm I'm back to trying to figure out what this market's doing because the market is making me money, but now it's it is kind of meandering. So I need to I need to continue continue to observe and orient. I can't just be static. I need to be dynamic. Does that make sense? I always need to be trying to stay in tune with this market. I can't just sit like a zombie in front of the screen. How many of you sit in front of the screen like a zombie and go, uh, I got money, and you don't do anything else? Well, I think a lot of you do. Of course it happens. I know you try to actively live, but, you know, when a market's doing this, it's tough, isn't it, Don? It'll put you to sleep. Or it'll make you want to go play with the kids. So yeah, you try and try and be actively linked at the bottom, at the at the right end of the chart. All right, so now we are pulling away. I, you know, I shoot. I, I could even have done this, I guess. If I want. Seems like a bit of a stretch, but you know, who knows what's what's going to be important in this market. I have no idea whether it is. I'm just throwing it out there. Sometimes I'm not sure what to do other than to do the zombie stare. If you, you know what? If you find yourself in the zombie stare, get up, go to the bathroom, get something to drink, talk to the wife and kids. Do not turn the TV on. Do not turn the TV on. Heavy squats. Great idea. Sure. Push-ups. Stretches. Absolutely. I got all this from Joey and Dr. Dr. Gary, sure. And I do them. Okay, now we're back at my maximum excursion line. So I'm willing to do this. Make sense? Not even judge duty. Nope. Sorry. I don't know where it's going. I'm just trying to stay connected. Now, actually, we're above my maximum excursion line. Thank you, Jesus. Cool. And now, look, we've got more than 70 pips in this thing. That's pretty good. 700 bucks. Hello? 700 bucks. It's not bad, is it? A lot of you, if you made $700 a week times four, pretty good month, right? For any market, Bob. It's just, it was boring. Well, Jose, I can't let you out now because you set up repair law. I'm sorry, you're, more, you're married to that. So when we pull back, oh, the 700 bucks, well, we, good luck. See if you can find that. I mark this out of curiosity. That's not zombie mode. No, it's not. I'm not in zombie mode. And my this weird little line that I drew in out of the blue. So far it's working. So far it's working. Now, I say about this line right here, is this a center line? Is it a trend barrier? What the heck is it? Maybe it's just a maximum. I don't know what it is. It just is. Whoa. Wake up. Zombie mood. Zam zombie mode is gone. If you weren't awake before, you should be now. You didn't expect that? Well, that's why you need to be connected bar by bar, right? It looks like it built energy and it expended some energy, doesn't it? Now we're at the lower parallel. So. Yeah, you know what? That works for me. Now I don't feel like, you know, having chosen these alternate pivots were was a particularly stupid exercise. It might end up being meaningful. To what end? I don't know. But we'll see. So a wide range bar lower. 
but we close same close after making a new low candidate for a wash okay I'm going to put in a median line I know I haven't marked the C but you can pretty well guess with the wash that it's likely to be a C right with the wash it's a logical location and of course when that happens okay I get it washed my socks now and nice center line yes now let me not forget to do this Because remember, our stop is at uh, 20 at the best. Some of you are at break even, some of you are at 20. Wrong color, stupid. We want to manage. We either want, we got a target. Jose has a target. And if some of you, uh, uh, if other people get a target, we'll go to target. But otherwise, we want to manage underneath swings, correct? All right. So let's watch price. Um, I'm just wrong all over the place. Okay. So here's our current high. Busted. Just absolutely busted. Are we finally breaking out? Now I've got undershoot here. I mark under shoot up here just in case, right? But what about our stops? We were here or we're at break even. We could go to 35, we could go to 30. Well, how far underneath the wash do you want to be? 5, 10, 7? And John G says seven. Okay, so some of you can you know it's your own decision. Forty one. Thirty five is six seven. It's your own decision. Okay. That's a problem. Five under the wash. What's the problem, BJ? nowhere else to put a stop yeah I agree but now we're all the way up above nine double oh we gotta have a stop some we, we need to protect some money don't we if you got a thousand dollars do you want this to be a loss okay now how many people are sitting here thinking that's a lot of money honey how could I get do I want to even, this thing is moving so slow, maybe I want my $1,000. We don't do halves here, Jose. Sorry. You're in the wrong website. That's tradingthemarkets.com, where they want you to pay brokerage and then go away. We keep it simple, all or nothing, okay? Now, if you're sitting here going $1,000, I'd like the $1,000. This thing's dragged me around for two days, and I watch it for a week before that. How about the $1,000? After the wash, it's not time to get impatient, says wash. Okay. So some people want out. Well, you, I'm not going to let you out at this bar, David. Sorry. We don't trade impulsively. Doesn't mean we can't find a way out. Risk reward is early from 1 to 5, if we can get out. Yep. With this trade, $1,000, well, it's on the move now. Okay. With this trade, $1,000 sounds great and look for something else. Bob, okay, let's see if I can find a way for you to not only satisfy your urge to take profit, but also do it logically, okay? We don't trade impulsively. It needs to make the same type of sense as it did to get in. With me, Bob? And Jose, I'd let, I'd let you take the money except that you, you know, you said you'd have you have to take the upper parallel. 
Remember that? You want me to let you out? If you got in later and this has been a flatter market, isn't this a thank you, Jesus, opportunity? Could be, but you still have to get out logically. Jose, I'll let you play the game. All right, so we've got a blue upsloping median line. Everybody see that? We're going to mark our prior high. You need to pick up the speed here. It's not going to let me mark this. Oh, maybe it will. Nope, it's not. Oh, I pick up the speed and make a mistake. Slow down, Tim. All right, well, here's our prior highs. I'll do it this way. There's a pixelated line that won't let me do it. All right, so let's go. Let's uh, open up a little bit. We all good? This is important stuff now. This is a little minor stuff. I don't think I've showed you how to do this before. I've got a minor median line inside of the one that's showing me the probable path of price. Does everybody understand what I've got? I've got two median lines nested together. There's a reason for this median line. The reason is Bob and several other people said, I want my money. I'm not going to let you take it impulsively. There are ways to get out. Okay? Ready? Whole lot of nothing pulling back. Don't guess, David. Pulling back. <sighs> Sheesh. Well, I'll tell you what. I got this as a prior high. Here's frequency. We bust above the frequency. If you want to get out at the blue median line, I'm good with that. So as price is coiling here, if you say, you know what, if it goes back to the median line, that's going to be plus or minus about the same as this high, I'm good with that. That makes some logical sense. That's where price should run out of energy, right? It's a, this is also a great timing mechanism. Maybe you're not going to use this to trade. Half of you are. Half of you just want your money. I got no problem with that. You want your money? You're going to have to find a way to do, log, do it logically. Okay, so you can take some profit here and just walk away. Okay? Who's still in? Okay, there are people in. Some other people have taken money. Yeah, I know, Jose, you're long gone. So let's see what happens. Price pulls back. Jose looks like a genius. Bob looks like a genius. Okay, now I've got M MLC. I don't even remember. I mark anything? Hang on. I, I, I admit I'm lost. I probably didn't mark in the pivots. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, I put in a, a mini one. Okay, can you see it? The undershoot. Oh, there it is. MLA, MLB, MLA, MLB, MLA. This is a Trying to stay in the moment median line and nothing more than that. With me? Okay. MLC. And I know it looks like I got a lot marked in here, but, you know, you'll learn to deal with it. We come up. We're outside the blue now. 
Dawn doesn't like this anymore. She's upset. But we're still within the pink. Now we're on the switch back of the blue. See it? We're likely to either accelerate higher or pull back, according to Andrews. And you get the pullback. And the pullback. That's where I add warning line one of this red. Wrong one, peach fuzz. There we go. Now, this median line is a pay it, it, it helps me stay in the moment, and it's also a good timing mechanism for those of you that are still in the trade. I'm still in the trade. If this median line means anything, this warning line should mean something because the next one's going to be below this prior low. We haven't broken a major low yet, have we? I almost sounded Jamaican there for a second. Have we? Anyway, and look at the close. Hey, man. I'm not a very good Jamaican, but I don't even play one on TV. Here's our low. Let's see what happens. Nice separation. Absolutely. How about that? Now, how about this nice little median line and the job it does keeping us in tune? And that's what it's for. It's for nothing else other than that. It's trying to keep us in the moment. We found some things that work. We want to keep finding things that work. Follow me? Nothing more than that. Okay. Wash. Anybody? While you, th while you talk about it for a second, I'm going to mark out a couple here real quick. Could be with that other close. All right, let's see. Wash. Did you see that one coming? You did? No, Petra, no. All right, so I don't know about you. Now you're back above 90 double O. Never touch this. Never touch this low. So, you know, we can draw this. New stop. Yes, no. Okay, I'm going to mark it. You guys are staying. I got one yes and I got a lot of stays. 46, so it's 39. Okay, that ruin line looks like similar frequency of previous higher low. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I'm not going to go back and look, but I think you're right. Follow through to the upside. This makes me want... Now, my stop has to be at best here, but that makes me want to move here. I mean, if this is nothing, then I don't want to play anymore. You're going to take out 300 bucks. That trade would have driven me mad. I would be happy when it was all over. Well, we're not over yet. Dawn, are you out? Oh, okay. So Dawn took her uh, 850 bucks. Okay. Is that a new high? Yes, it is. This is the ultimate high high, and it's the highest close. I'm Dawn, I'm trying to teach you specifically how to stay in the trade. Okay? So don't turn off on me. Stay connected. Mark the high. Prior highs are acting as support. Multiple tops. Come down, test the prior low. A lot of nothing. Now we take out the multiple tops. Now I'm not going to move my stop. My stop here. Don't get nutty on me. Let me 
And if, that, if you're going to do that, you might as well just take the profit. And by the way, it would be the same profit. But it's still showing upside impulse. And lows are holding. Extreme lows. And this low, let me just... I don't know how far it's worth, but let's take it to the median line. Okay. Is holding. And now this is a new high and a new high close again. Do we all see it? And it's right at the frequency line we put in. Still making new highs. Still making new highs. Uh, Jose, could have had your money at uh, 90, 40, whatever. <clears throat> I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Got a little antsy there. Could have had an extra 300 bucks. But maybe the day and a half wasn't worth it to you. I don't know. I can understand that. Okay. Let's follow price out. First time above, yeah, first time we've even tested this line. Sprinting now. Sort of. Now we're range trading. So we got to put this in. I'll fix it later. Still making new highs. I'm just going to keep running it out. That's where my target is, Jose. I said that at the beginning. The exercise was to help some people like Dawn that are trying to learn to stay in trades and follow it out. What about stops now? I don't see anything other than here. Do you? Do you want to go here? I'll put you here. Okay. Petra wants to go seven under here. So this is, so that's 83. Anybody else? Anybody? Some people are not even here. Those people, do you want to go there? There's Petra stop. John G, where do you want to be? Down here or at 83? Big John's at 83. John's at 83. 90.55. The hell is 90.55? What? Your stop's right here. Uh, take Just take your profit to the market, Wes. That much, Rebecca, or like that? Okay. More? More? Is that good? Okay. Tell me one. You good? Okay. All right. So, Wes, you can't trade at the market, but I'll let you trade at the... Uh, I've lost. I've lost track of where I'm at. Hard, hard to stay connected. Here we go. Some people went to 83. Wes wants to go at not underneath 90.55. That's not a swing, my friend. This. Uh, that's a swing. If you want, you can trade at the next bar. Or you can put your stop underneath here. Those are the opportunities. Well, you go back and watch the replay to say and see if you can get back connected. Wes, you can be seven under here, or you can take your money at the next bar's opening. Okay. So 
45 minus 7 is 34. There's Wes's stop. Okay, we ready? Ninety one ten, new highs. Dawn. Ninety one ten, new highs. Petra, where do you want your stop? You can't go five under the wide range bar, sorry. You can go to Wes's old stop and Wes's old stop. This is nothing yet. I will not let you make things up. Uh, th this is the second time you try to make things up, up Wes. Not here. Okay? 90-40. Well, yeah, that's this right here. Wake shot. You can be here. Yep. In nine minutes, I'll be gone. So, all right. So, we're at 90-34. Now, I'm going to say that we left Wes. Watch. Now I'm going to say that we've left a swing. See it? See it, Wes? Now you can go here. 80, 67, so 60. Me, I'd go to 59 just because I don't change my underwear when I'm in a winning streak. Do you get it, Wes? That's what I'm doing, Don. Don says, can you just stay underneath that last swing and see where price goes? Yeah, why not? You're out 100 pips. I'm st uh, 100 pips ago, you were gone. I got another extra $1,000, Don, and all I'm doing is snug underneath these stops, the prior swings. But I'm not, like, I'm not allowing Wes to trade just because he wants to trade. It has to be a swing before he can trade, okay? Get it? Wes, do you understand? Just because it moved higher doesn't mean you get to trade. It's not you can't get to move your stop till it becomes a swing. It becomes a swing when it pulls back, takes out the top. Okay, everybody get that? All right. And I'm not even in the ultimate super secret major has to be a swing as much as it it has to pull back and then take out the high. Okay. Otherwise, just take your money at the market, Wes, Jose, Dawn. Okay, we, and that's not allowed here in the breakfast session. We don't do that. has to be logical, okay? I'm trying to teach you. Dawn, what I want you to take out of this, you listening to me? Because I got six minutes. Listen, look. even if I got stopped out here, I'm $1,000 better than you. I want you to learn how to lengthen this out. So I want you to watch this several times and say, oh, okay. And I want you don't have to do it the next time you trade. Practice it, please, first, second, third, fourth, eight times, ten times, twelve times. But you need to be thinking this. Instead of, i got to get my money, i got to get my money, i got to get my money. Start thinking about this. Okay? There are times, it's not all the time, but there are times when it pays to just relax and let the market work for you, okay? I have no idea where this is going, to be honest. I'm just trying to, you know, get you a feel for reality. Now, if we get a minor pullback, and we don't have one, it's now Monday, where Dawn lives. We didn't get any minor pullback, or I'd say we could use this. I'm still going to say if we blast off, you can go under here. But Okay. So now I think we can be 
7 pips under here. So 8174. Everybody see the back and forth? By the way, remember our upper parallel? It's sneaking up on us. That's what time will do for you. We are now me getting up in Arizona and saying, wow, look what happened overnight. Now we're coming to real time. That's real, okay? If nothing else, we've locked in 160 pips, 1,600 bucks. And we've given an opportunity to go even higher. Now if we take out this high, because we've got a minor pullback, we can go again. Do you see it all, everybody? Yes, this was hard work. This is one of those trades that I, you know, it's a lot of work. It's hard to stay connected, isn't it? If you're not connected, though, you're not going to harvest this kind of money. And look, if you just took 850 out of this trade, that's a nice trade. Don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you that's not fine. It is fine. But some of you have said to me, including you, Don, I wish I knew, I wish I could get myself to stretch these out. Well, here's one way, okay? Can it? Can't it be too risky to hold over the weekend early on in a trade? Well, we, we weren't in early on in the trade, Connor. The trade didn't start till Sunday. There could be a gap much larger than your stop, sure. But you know what? There can always be a gap larger than your trade. But, yes, if I didn't have equity in a trade, if I were you, I wouldn't hold it over the weekend, right? I will certainly squeeze in, Nick of course. Probably like that. Does that work? Or one less. Okay. Like that. Okay. One second, Don. I'll tell you. Uh, we're getting in at... This is the this is the the least we can make on this trade. We're risking thirty to make one hundred and fifty. I don't know. Do the math. Five to one. No, that's wrong. It's twenty. It's not. So it's twenty-one to make one hundred and fifty-one. Seven and a half to one. Okay. This is wrong. I don't think I can change it, but where are you, a little bastard? That's what we risked. 21 to risk to make 151, okay? So there's nothing wrong with taking your money here, and it, I showed you how to do it logically. But for those of you that are trying to learn how to stretch, this is not always the right thing to do. Don't get me wrong. It's why I showed you this. Practice this technique as well. I haven't showed this before. Here's a great way, Bob, Jose, to logically take a trade. I, you know what? I got like $800 in this trade. How do, can I have my money, please? Well, you can't just go to the market. I want you all to find logical solutions to everything you need to do, okay? Bob, you, are you, did, did you fall asleep, Bob? I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame you if you did. Still there, Bob? Did that work for you? The Spock rule. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I got one minute. Did that work for you, Bob? Taking your profit here? Yes, good point. Need more patience. Well, but also, how about just the logic of how I showed you to hunt for your profit? I don't mind you taking profit here, Bob. I really don't. Okay? If you decide you want to stretch your profits more, now you've seen an exercise on how to do it. But if you want to logically take your profits, there's a great timing mechanism to use it and you, to do it. And you use, you'll be shocked how often this works. How about that? So, anyway, it is 8.30. I need to see Dr. Gary. I don't want to throw a schedule off. I hope this was an interesting lesson. I know it was a weird one. It's one of those where you come away with a lot of money, and yet you don't feel like celebrating because it was so much work. But it was either $800 or, you know, $1,500. It's not so bad, right? Aaron was so bored he just signed off. Anyway, you guys have a good Monday. Hopefully I'll see you at the midday. Good night, Don. See you all later.